We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shepap Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepap. We are in Embu County, Betty North. Now we're here to meet a young farmer who's embraced farming. So let's go meet him. Ah. This area of Embu is mostly dry and farming is not easy. But from an initial look of the farm, it seems that the young men have really put some work into getting most out of the land. Uh, Peter and Kyoko, thank you so much for welcoming us to your home. Yes. Now tell us, how long have you been living here? We have lived here since we were born. Kyoko, how yes. long have you been farming? From the time I accomplished my O level, mm -hmm. that is 11 years I've been farming. So you've been farming for 11 years? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Peter, how about you? Actually, from my O levels, I went to do an automotive engineering course. You're a mechanic? I am a mechanic. Yes. I have worked in, with various companies in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And after some times, I, I, I got to see it wasn't working well with me. Meanwhile, Kyoko here back at the farm was doing great. Sure, sure. Making lots of money. Sure. <laughs> and you are just there in Nairobi. I was just there. And then you decided you're coming back. <laughs> yeah, that was my To join him here. Sure. This is better than being in Nairobi. Yeah, it's better than being in Nairobi. Do you have any other brothers, Kyoko? Yes, four of them. Are they also in Nairobi? Some of them, two of them, <laughs> went there, but they did not see. Mm. They stayed around uh, two or three months, mm -hmm. then they get back. And also came back to join you. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> So what are you growing here? We are keeping dairy cows. Mm -hmm. We are also doing horticulture. We are farming tomatoes, bananas, and the skuma wiki. And we are also rearing pottery. What problems do you have in the farm? We have been suspecting that pests have been getting into our farms and destroying our vegetables. Our pottery have not been doing well. Yeah, on the other side, we, when we are doing tomatoes, they are so destructive elements around our farm. Mm. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you need expert advice. Yeah, we do. And it, you are lucky because Shamba Shepherd is here. Yes. Welcome. And we didn't come alone. We've come with experts. Yeah. We are going to be in your farm, help you, see what you can do to improve. Right? Thank you. And get better and better yields. I mean, brothers working together, Tony, that is impressive. It is impressive to think that they could come back from the town where mm -hmm. they thought maybe they could, they could, you know, have a better life and come back home and start doing agriculture and doing it to this kind of scale. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Now we need just to push them, give them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Even the cow seems very impressed, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do what we can to help them here on Shabba Shepa. Let's get to work. The environment is a life of farming. As farmers, we need to adapt to climate changes and do what we can to sustain our environment while still carrying out our farming. To tell us more is Alfred, an expert from Kari. Now Alfred, these are the hardworking young farmers. Perhaps you'd start by explaining to them what evergreen is. The bottom line is to have a system that you are getting adequate food mm -hmm. for yourself, yeah. for your family, mm -hmm. and to sell. Also, while you are getting this food, you are conserving environment. That is very important. Sustainable mm -hmm. for many days. If you look at what uh, our forefathers used to do, mm -hmm. within one farm, they used to have several food types. So you find even when it's very dry, there's yes. a food in the field. When it's uh, wet, there's food. So there is food throughout within the farm. Mm -hmm. So how does a farmer go about in implementing evergreen? Once he is in the farm, he has to look at the issues or practices that make the farm fertile so that the food can be produced throughout the year. Now, by looking at this farm, do you think that the young farmers here have somehow embraced evergreen yet? 
Uh, I need to congratulate to the farmers, these uh, two farmers, because they have tried. Because one thing, if you look at the allowance, the environment of this area is a dry area. Yes. But look at the farm. You find the farmers have planted a lot of trees. They have put up a number of uh, conservation structures. Mm -hmm. That is the beginning. And other farmers, I think, can learn a lot from this farm. Uh, this kind of concept, we are calling it uh, conservation agriculture. That is, you plow in a less way within the farm. What you do is, you come and dig the holes where your seeds are going to be planted. That's point number one. Then the other bit is, uh, you have to diversify the crops within the farm. Grow other crops like legumes. Grow other crops like fruit trees so that you get food from here and here. And number three issue is you have to have your field covered. Look at this field where you are standing. Mm -hmm. They are all crop residue on. Okay? Now you've heard from the expert yes. that when the soil erosion comes and carries away your soil, it's carrying away what? Money. 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 And if the wind comes and blows, what, what is it carrying? Money. Money. Do you want that to happen? No. Good, let's go to the terraces so that you can teach him yeah. how to do proper, proper, proper yes, tree yes. planting. Yes. Alfred, apart from high value trees, the young farmers would also love to plant fodder trees. Maybe you can explain to them what it takes to plant fodder trees. And uh, fodder trees goes with the uh, livestock. Mm -hmm. They are fed to livestock. Fodder trees are also high value trees. We can plant them on the terrace, mm -hmm. Fanyanju terrace. Mm -hmm to provide the fonda for livestock yes. and also to, to, to stabilize the tellers Thanks. so that it's not run off by running water. Because I think we better do that practically. When planting trees on terraces, plant at the top of the terrace. Dig holes 25 centimeters apart for the fodder trees. Put a handful of manure and mix. Dispose of the plastic bag properly. Plant the fodder tree. After three months, you should be able to start pruning for feed. Four kilos of fresh caliandra is said to be equivalent to one kilogram of dry feed as a ration. The leaves can also be incorporated into the soil to add nitrogen. Every farm has some chicken. But Kyoko is really trying to grow his local poultry farming into a business. He has built a shed and has a good number of birds. But all is not perfect and could do with a shepherd. Here to help is an expert from the Department of Livestock. Kyoko and Peter, for how long have you been keeping these chickens? Four years ago. How has the production been? It has been a challenge. Now, I brought you an expert. Yes. Who's going to talk to you about your chickens? Mrs. Kenya, we had a look around and we saw for ourselves. Now, what would you advise these young farmers on what they should do right? Um, first, I would start with the housing. You're supposed to put wound shavings to prevent the chicks from getting cold. Wound shavings also, they are supposed to dry the moisture. The floor is supposed to be completely dry. If it is not dry, you have diseases. They are also freeze, especially this area. So when there is the wound shaving, you suffocate the freeze, the rice and the rest. The chicks are supposed to have enough finders so that they will be able to find all of them. With one finder, the chicks which are faster in moving, they will be able to eat and then the rest will not eat well. The other thing, it is the housing. It's not completely sealed. There are areas where the rodents can come in and eat the chicks. Also, the chicks are small. With all those holes, the wind, the cold is supposed to attack them and then they will get sick and die. You are supposed to put rain nest so that the birds which are rain will have a place to raise their eggs. The other issue is the house. You have chicks on the lower part and the hens upper. You need to seal the floor so that the feces will not 
drop down to the cheeks. The mature chicken are not supposed to be put together with the chicks because chicks, they are very young. They are not yet even resistant to diseases. So the moment you mix them up, you get your chicks dying almost every other day. So they need to be kept separately and then the others. Right. Now, what, what kind of breed is this, gentlemen? These are just local breeds. Well, could you explain to them the advantages of keeping Kenyaji chicken? The cost of production is low. They are resistant to diseases. And you'll be able also to feed them with the retro feeds. Great. Surely you must have some questions burning you up. Let's start, Peter. When we have been having chicks, most of the times they have been dying. So probably I would be happy to know various causes of chicks' death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first thing you need to do is to put those chicks in a clean place. Then there are the vaccines. You are supposed to vaccinate them the first 14 days. You give Newcastle. When is the right time to give the vaccine? For the vaccines, we have various vaccines. We call it a vaccination program. Yes. You start when there are two weeks. That is 14 days. You start with NCD. After 21 days, you give Guboro. Then you repeat at 32 days. Then after there are three months, you repeat in your castle. When they are two months old, we vaccinate for typhoon. When they are 10 weeks, that is two months and two weeks, we vaccinate full pox. For the Newcastle, for the Gumboro, the farm, you yourself, you can provide it. Currently, there is Newcastle vaccine from Kari. That one doesn't need to be put in the fridge. You give a chick one drop per nose. When vaccinating for Newcastle, one way is to starve the birds of water for about three hours. Mix the vaccine, which comes in doses for 100 birds, in water and let them drink. Put just enough water to be finished within two hours. The other way is to give each bird a drop through the nose or eye. With the birds vaccinated, it was time to improve their living conditions. Water harvesting, conservation and proper use is very vital in running a well-managed farm. Here to advise on the best practice is Boniface, an expert with the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD. Boniface, yes. I see you're already here. Yes. Well done with okay. hard-working brothers. Yes. What are your observations? By looking at what they have done, like this terrace, we need to redo it. One is uh, if the first year they dig it, and it has to be late so that uh, you don't direct the water to the wrong side. So you need to retain all the water in this farm. You make sure that every year, if there are any uh, damage to that, that terrace, you redo it so that finally you continue maintaining it so that it is at that level where there is no soil erosion on that farm. You need now to look at the best way to harvest the, the water that uh, is not enough when it rains. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the recommendations is uh, you dig up all so that uh, you mix the soil and uh, the manure so that uh, whatever little rain that cleans this area, you, the, the crop can be able to retain and uh, use up that water. Naomi, we are in the drier part of Embu County. Yeah, it's truly dry and the young men have really tried the dug wells. Yes, mm -hmm. I can see water pipes all over the farm. They are trying, trying to get some water and use it efficiently. 
And you're going to help them and encourage them as well. Absolutely. When we come back, we'll make sure that their farm is truly, truly shipped up. To receive all Shamba Shape Up leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. You're still here in the drier part of Embu. We are tackling various issues. We've got evergreen agriculture. Proper use of water. Chickens and lots, lots more. So, let's get on with it. So Boniface, here's a well. Yes. What do you think? This is a commendable job for these two farmers. With this well, you can easily be able to plant the farm. But there are several things that I would recommend for them to start doing. One is uh, this farm needs to be, we need to do a farm plan, which you will know at what time do you plant which crop and where. Number two, you need to put records, keep records, so that uh, the records will be telling you which crop does well by when you look at the inputs and the output. Three is at what time does a crop gives you the best price in the market. So you can now plan backwards and say, if the best price is gotten in October for, say, tomatoes or green maize, now you work backwards and because you know how long it takes for the crop to be ready for the market, you can go back because you have water to do that. We need to use the best method that we will be able to utilize what you call efficiently use of water. There are several two methods which we recommend, the drip and the sprinkler. There are crops we don't recommend for you to use sprinkler because uh, you have a problem in uh, disease control and pest control. Yes. yes. So have you ever used a farm plan? No. no. What do you use? At times we just plant normally and we, we, we do, we plan and we can plant early because we have this litre water mm -hmm. before the rains so that by the time the rains will come we, our plants will have grown for some few weeks or some few months. You plant earlier to beat them at it. Yeah. It's yes. a good plan. Yeah. You try to trick your way into yes. it. So do you think that you need a good farm plan? Yes, yes I do. So Boniface, um, they've said they, they want a plan, mm. a farm plan. So I guess we give them one. Yes. Right? Tomatoes are part of Kyoko's core business. He's concerned that they're being affected by pests and diseases, and to help him solve this problem, is an expert from our friend Sijenta. Monica, I see the young people have taken you around, yeah. and I can also see that you've identified the problem with their vegetables. Yeah. What is it? Yeah, there are some few things that is disturbing this, the, this crop. We have one diamond back mouth. As you can see, the crop is uh, totally destroyed by this, the, this pest. I think every one of you can see this this small pest. It's called GBM. That's what is drawing these small holes on the leaf. And we've got another problem that is havens. And the havens are these ones which you can see as if there is whitish on the crop. That's what is disturbing the crop. So how does that affect the vegetable production? It means that if the crop is like this, it's not able to to feed or to take what is in the soil properly because of the the infection that it has got. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give us now? For DBM, we have got the product that is called Match. On this product, you can see it's uh, there is a diamond back mood that is drawn on the product. So it means now, because of the problem of DBM, you are supposed to use the Match for that mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. And now, because we have got another problem on the same the, on the same crop, mm -hmm. we've got the havens on this crop. These are the sucking pest, and the sucking pest you can use uh, Actara for that problem. Now we have got Match for DBM, and we have got uh, Actara for ovens. So like uh, well, we've seen uh, people coming to buy after spraying, when is it safe to sell? Okay, we've seen problem with farmers because when they spray a product they run off to go and pick and then take to the market, mm -hmm. not uh, thinking that that product will, uh, will destroy the bodies of those people that they are taking to. When the crop is younger and you're not taking to the market or there, is, there are no people who are coming to buy, you can spray much, but now when the crop is ready for, for the market, you use uh, karate. Mm -hmm. Karate is only for, for three days. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we found another problem in our vegetables and the 
problem is about the, the they are whitish sporty ish, whitish mm -hmm. and again there are other sports that are look like a ban mm -hmm. how do we go about to treat those ones oh that is called boundary mildew if you find that your crop is whitish in Kara and there are no uh, pests like havens, okay. then it means there, are, there is boundary mildew. And that boundary mildew is not, it's not a, a pest, but it's a, a fungal infection. We've got two products for boundary mildew. Mm -hmm. We've got score and we've got Otifa. But now, uh, I said in the beginning when the crop is young, you're supposed to spray score, so spray score because score stays for a longer time uh, before you harvest. But okay. now if they are harvesting your crop, you mm -hmm. can use Otifa. Okay. Because Otifa, you can stay for seven days and then you can take your crop in the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's safe for people to take. Thank you so much, Monica. That's it for the Skuma Wikis. What about the tomatoes behind you? What did you observe? When we went around, you could see some, some pests frying the white, very white ones. Mm -hmm. eh? Those ones are called the, the white fries. Because when you don't take care of it, your tomato will not go anywhere. Because mm -hmm. now they suck the, the, the fruit that is in tomatoes, and that tomato cannot be able to pick the food that is in the soil. When you go around, maybe you could see some white fries yes. frying and following you. Yes. Especially when you have got a green jacket like mine, you could white. see them following okay. me. Because they, yes. they like green things and ah. so uh, with that problem still the, the, this product is very nice the Aktara one for white fries and in case they are still having and other sucking pests mm -hmm. this this product will take care of all of them uh -huh. yeah. okay. and with your product how how long do we take before we harvest the tomatoes because normally here we harvest twice per week that is on Monday and on Thursday when can we do the harvest after we do the spray? Okay, now with these products that I have, I said I've got Aktara for white fries. Aktara is safe for, for four days. You can go and pick your crops or you, you pick your fruits after four days. Read me seven days. Yeah, so that one you have to eat for seven days. Or, or maybe you harvest your, your, your fruits, the mm -hmm. ones that are ripe or ready. Okay. You harvest all of them mm -hmm. and then you leave the ones that are not, uh, are not ready. Mm -hmm. and then you can, you can spray Ridomil and Aktara together mm -hmm. and now you can pick up the seven days. To tackle diamond black moth, use much. For aphids, use Aktara. And if you're near harvesting, use Karate. For powdery mildew, use Core. While spraying using a tara, match or score, put the chemical in a small container and mix in with some water. Put some water in the pump. Pour in the mixture and mix. Fill in the 20-liter pump with water. Remember to always use protective clothing when handling chemicals. Spray on a cloudy day or in the evening. It's been an amazing shape up with chicken, tomatoes, skumawiki and trees here in Embu. It has been full of life and youthful energy. The young farmers sure have a bright future. Peter and Kyoko, we've worked so hard on your shamba in the hot sun. Yeah. Yes. Now what do you think? How do you feel right now? I'm feeling well mm -hmm. and we have learned a lot. Yes. The experience is quite excellent. And we promise you we are going to follow all the instructions that you have shown us. Yes. And we promise that when we get back here, we'll find a difference uh -huh. in our shamba. Great. Mm. Peter, how was the experience? The experience was good. And I can say shortly we are really shaped up. You are shaped up? Yeah. We are taking off now? Yeah, we are taking off. <laughs> so Peter, what would you advise young people who are still in Nairobi struggling to find a living? My word to them is that they should come back mm -hmm. and there are other opportunities. Mm -hmm. Let them decide and go into farming. Yes. And with hard work, it will pay. Great advice. <laughs> Great advice. What do you think, Naomi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really admire you. So, Peter, apart from hard work, what more does a young person who wants to go to farming need or requires? I believe one needs good information. Mm -hmm. One needs to get into the right technology, yes. get good advice mm -hmm. from, from those people who have the experience and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I know 
one can really change and get into business. Well, those are the words of two hard-working brothers. Well done. Very wise words from very hard-working brothers who are on their way to becoming even better farmers. Truly, from the looks of things, they will be great. And this is all thanks to... Shamba Shepherd. Shepherd. To receive all Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just a leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Shamba Shepherd is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashepherd.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shape Up, or simply text 30606.